for another one today I'm going to talk about canteen day commissary day store day whatever you want to call it you know in Missouri it's mostly called store day or canteen day but if you're new subscribe hit that like everyone share these videos if you like them prison content and leave a comment if you uh, I've been in prisons in other countries or states. Let me know how the, uh, the canteen is there, the commissary. All right, let's talk about this. In Missouri, they have uh, canteen day every week, you know, and it's different for each house. Like three house may go on a Thursday, four house on another day. But each house has a different day. What that's the way it was before I left anyway and uh, there's always a build up you know uh, especially if you're towards the end of the week it seems like like on Monday if your canteen day is on Thursday or Friday Monday you're waiting you know you're waiting for canteen day real way around you know and people are getting their uh, call on, seeing, seeing if their money had been sent, you know. Um, checking, you know, uh, their accounts. It used to be you had to wait to canteen day and go to the caseworker's office. The caseworker you give them your, your name and your number. They'd look you up and tell you how much you, you had. Now, they got kiosks and even tablets. I think people can check on their tablets now. But before I left, they had a uh, kiosk. You went to the kiosk and you checked. So, canteen day rolls around. And... Uh, Everybody, usually you stand in a line. I usually waited, you know, since I worked recreation. I usually waited until the line went down a little bit. Because at first, I mean, there's a mad rush. And then you stand outside of the, the, the canteen, and they let so many in at a time. You know, they take IDs. Because I started doing that because people was cutting in the line and stuff. So they take so many IDs. And so many people... They call so many people in, then they come out, take some more IDs, and then when those people come out, they let the next group go in, and on and on. So, finally everyone has spent, and this is kind of hectic for the store man, the guy who loans to people for interest. Because he has to collect all this stuff, you know. There's people coming to his cell all the time, bringing stuff they owe him. I would suggest not owing the store man. Um, I was a store man for a short time. That's only because it was left to me. But it's a, it's a good hustle. I'm not saying... If you're a store man, it's a good hustle. You know, you can make some money. But it was too much of a hassle for me. I mean, you, you sit around and, you, and people bring you stuff. You really have no time to relax because people on canteen day, they're bringing you stuff, you know. And as soon as somebody brings you something and you're sitting back and you're starting to relax again, here comes somebody else. Then you have to deal with those who, um, for some reason or another, 
they tried to give you a story, you know, um, how my money didn't hit, which in some cases is, is the case, but in most cases it's just them trying to run, you know, just, they're just talking, making excuses. But if you're on the other side, I rarely went to the store man. Once in a while, I would, you know. But um, most times I didn't because I've seen people get in debt over the store man, a lot of money, a lot of stuff. And they pay it. That's not the problem. They pay it, but then they have nothing for themselves. So they go to the store man again. And they're always, they never have anything except what they owe the store man. So they're always, you know, they're, he's like got them. I'm not saying that's a bad thing or for the store man. You know, I'm not putting him down for that. That's his hustle, you know. But if you're on the other side, you don't want, you don't want to be in debt like that. You know, you want stuff that's yours. You don't want to be owing all the time. Then you have these guys that they um, will buy food, zuzus and wham whams. Never buy what they need. So then they, they don't have no, maybe no hygiene items, um, no coffee or when I was there, tobacco. So they're always going around asking, hey man, you got a shot of coffee, you got tobacco. Hey man, I just saw you go to the store, why didn't you get you some coffee and tobacco? Oh man, you know, this and that. They buy sweets, but nothing like coffee or tobacco. And then you have those that never get any money in and they're always trying to bum. They see somebody go to the store and they'll say, man, I see you balling, you know, hook me up. And here's the thing, they're never your friend. And never may they ever talk to you. Unless they need something. Then all of a sudden they act like they've known you for years and, and been hanging around with you for a long time. And you don't want to give them anything either. You know, unless they're cool with you. If you're cool with them, I don't mind like a friend or something or somebody I worked out with, you know, if he needs something. Here you go, ma'am. You know, take this. And I really don't ask for anything back. You know, I'm just helping somebody out. But if I don't know you, you know, don't don't come bumming. You know. Because you know, you, you give these people an inch and they take a mile. Then there's the cook ups. You know, every canteen day in the evening time, you can smell. Everybody's cooking up. Everybody's down at the microwave, or they got their crock pots going. We we were allowed to have crock pots there for a while, and uh, they stopped selling those. I think it's because people were putting them in bags and hitting people with them. But uh, you know, pizzas, prison pizzas, burritos, nachos, anything you can think of. You know, some people made uh, uh, brownies. I never did make brownies, but I had a Sally who did, and he was good at it. It, it was, he was good. Then you have those <laughs> that uh, they may buy some um, tortilla shells and some soups, and they go down to the microwave. Like this one guy, he he would make. Uh, these burrito like things but all it really was was just ramen soups up in there and he'd walk around and wing eating these so everybody thought oh you know he's got money he really didn't and so I don't know why he did that you know 
but because uh, nobody cares, you know. If, you know, nobody really cares, you know. So he, uh, but you have others that did similar things like fry the ramen. They call it frying the ramen noodles, you know, putting it in the microwave a little bit, letting them cook, you know, work. There ain't no really no water with them. They're just maybe wetted down a little bit. And they keep doing this until they're black. And this one guy, he would have all types of condiments out there. You know, these are things that he could have done to sell. But he wants to do it out in the wing to put on a show. The problem I had with that, I didn't have a problem with him. Whatever he's making, that's on him. What I had a problem with was he's holding the line up. And everybody who fries noodles did, you know, held the line up. Because they kept sticking them in there and shaking them, putting them in there for a little longer. And then finally, I want to talk about when I was in the prison, uh, me and this other guy uh, got to write. I can't even remember how we got in contact with this guy, but um, we got to writing a couple prisoners from Germany. And uh, the main reason for this is to ask them about their prison system, and they were asking about ours. And at one point, I asked this guy, I said, uh, do you guys have a store man over there? You know, guys who loan for interest you know he said yeah uh, so I asked him I said what what is it uh, one and a half to one or two for one he goes no it's three for one I, I couldn't believe it I said three for one he said yeah he said you, is it two for one over there I said it's usually two for one I said some people it's uh, one and a half. He goes, no. He goes, every store man I've seen over here is three for one. But he got to describing the jobs and stuff they had. And they had better jobs over there than we, the uh, prisoners do over here. You know, They get paid better over there. So that was kind of interesting to find out how the prisons and the canteen and stuff worked over there. He even sent me a canteen list. If I ever find it, I'll I'll show you guys sometime. Maybe that wouldn't be a good idea. It's, it's mostly in German. So it'd be hard to... I'd have to do a thing where it's German and English, you know. I don't know. I might do that sometime. But anyway, it was, they had all kinds of stuff on their canteen list. And even DVD players. I couldn't believe it. It just, you know, at least in Missouri, we're not we're not allowed to have DVD players, and I'm sure it's like that in most of the United States. But um, so I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the canteen and how that went, commissary, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, if you've been in prisons, and tell me about your uh, commissary day, how it went. Now, thank you for watching.